right? There I am. Yay. Yay. Oh my gosh, this is happening. It's real. It's <laughs> happening. Success. <laughs> Thank you so much for all the work that you did on your end to make this a reality. I appreciate oh, it. Oh yeah, absolutely. This is nothing. Yeah, I, I just keep having internet problems. <laughs> sucks. That sucks. <laughs> You cannot, listen, you cannot deal with 2020 with internet problems. Like, you can't, that's the one thing we have going is still the internet. It's not cool. Yeah, it's actually really funny because I, I was telling myself before this, nothing's going to go wrong. Everything's going to be smooth because sure. I, like, checked everything. Because that that's always what you do when you sure. start a stream is you check and you everything. make sure everything. Yep. And everything. it's gangbusters. And then, of, of course, as soon as you're live, you're like, well, this, I swear this wasn't, this was working earlier. Right. <laughs> and it's usually my community that's like, you didn't turn on the subtitles. You didn't. Like, <laughs> what, is, what are you doing? I'm like, I know how to do this. I've been doing this for three years. Same thing, three times a week. Definitely, definitely know what I'm doing. Don't, 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 don't at me. But also, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> yeah. Just be oh. like, yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you again so much for being here. Um, so why don't, okay, so something I learned today by Googling your name that I didn't find <laughs> the first time I Googled your name is that you come from a place in New Jersey that I live close to. That's what Oh, no way. Yeah. That's, that's actually really cool. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it? I was like, oh, man. I actually, so I went to college there. So that's why I was very stoked. Oh, in Upper Sutter River? No. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, met, so like near there. I met there. the county. Oh, Sorry. okay. Oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah. I was trying to be discreet about it, but you just, you were like, here's the town. <laughs> New oh, Doisy. it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shout out, shout out to all my Upper Sutter River peeps. <laughs> yeah. uh, but tell us a little bit about yourself. Give us like the, you know, the five second, not five second, give us an elevator <laughs> speech. The abridged to bridge version. Um, I've been working in gaming and entertainment for like probably at least ten years now. I don't. I don't know what is time anymore. This is ridiculous, guys. Um, no, but seriously, uh, the the video game industry is awesome. Um, I've had a really awesome time working with uh, like Rooster Teeth. Um, I. <laughs> Originally got the chance to work with G4 as an intern for them. Um, and now they're coming back, which is crazy. Um, oh man, Machinima, what am I missing? Anything, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've been around a while. <laughs> Doing your was, thing, yeah. Yeah, and I think I was bullied a lot as a kid. So mm -hmm. being able to be so invested in something that I love, which is video games and, and being such a great part of like this community has been like such a big part of my life as well. And like my identity. So yeah. <laughs> How did mental health play into all of that? Cause like it's, you know, you are a mental health advocate and that's something that's important to you and you talk about it. So when did that like come into play with everything that's going on that you're um, doing? It's crazy. Uh, well, I mean, I was definitely a product of the 90s. So um, just like that, I don't know if you saw uh, <laughs> Class Action Park on HBO, but it almost kind of, uh, it's like, it kind of makes, uh, pokes fun at um, like the mentality of like Jersey parents back then. It's like, oh, we don't care. Just let our kids run around. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> so it's like um, kind of that mentality. Um, and I was diagnosed with ADHD when I was like really young. Yeah. Everyone, so hyper. <laughs> Make her chill out. Yeah. Uh, kitty cat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Huge totally fans here. Kitty cats. <laughs> Hell yeah. The best. Um, but yeah, just I think growing up on a lot of meds and I got overdiagnosed things and was misdiagnosed stuff. Okay. But um at the center of all this uh was basically me failing out of college um but also realizing that I didn't need to be on all this medication and like it was like my first time just doing what I wanted to do with my life mm -hmm. um and that's kind of actually when I found G4 and I had already like been such like so invested in the gaming community like uh I played a lot of Day of Defeat uh and was part of a clan 
Uh, and I also had a Guild Wars guild called the Knights of Ni. Yes! Uh, oh, that I was very proud of. <laughs> um, so yeah, stuff like that um, definitely got me through like more difficult times. But um, yeah, that that moment was like a career shifting point for me because I, I always thought that I wanted to like do art or like soccer because I also got a soccer scholarship, which was weird, but I don't know. That was like more my dad's thing than me, really. Right, right, right. Um, and no disrespect to my dad, wonderful man. Hello, Ken. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I just got to a point where I was like, what do I want to do with my life? And yeah, just, and, and the interconnectivity of how they use like the Twitter ticker on the bottom as well, I thought was like so cool and innovative. Like as a, as like a former, like uh, MySpace junkie and, you know, just such a social person. I had like 15 Neopets. Like. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Bring it all the way back. Bring it all the way back. Oh my gosh. So, um, so you kind of, you came into yourself and you were like, Hey, I gotta, I, I like, this is the person that I want to be. How did you, at the time, at the time when we were youngins, it wasn't cool to be nerdy and we were making yeah. fun of for it. Yeah. So I hate sounding like such a hipster sometimes, but like. It's true. Back in the day, it wasn't cool, man. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. Oh, man. Do you. So how did you kind of, I guess, like, accept that about yourself, that you were a nerd and you were different, even though, you know, it like it wasn't an OK thing to be. It wasn't. I don't think. We had that kind of like, be whoever you want to be. I don't think that acceptance existed. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, for me, it was really hard because I I was playing soccer, like, competitively and doing sports and stuff. But, um, yeah, I was getting bullied a lot, like, kind of in school and then after school. And then, I don't know, being able to go into, like, online communities and escape into Guild Wars or escape into... Call of Duty and like just act out like scenarios with my clan was like the perfect escape outside of and and also the camaraderie too right. so like being able to escape is one thing but being able to do that with other people who are probably like-minded and are going through similar stuff because like obviously we're all going through stuff as as we know thanks to 2020 <laughs> <laughs> we are all stuffing yeah yeah Definitely. It's been a year. <laughs> it's been it's been a decade within a year. Uh, yeah. Woo. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's all just sandwiched into one. <laughs> well, uh. so and the thing that we kind of really wanted to talk about specifically was like living with trauma and dealing with trauma and moving past it. And uh, that's a thing I find. I, I don't know. Like that's that's difficult. I don't even know how to like bring up the subject. I, again, I've been interviewing people for quite a long time, but mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you can't just be like, "Hey, so your trauma? You seem like you're fine now. So you're good, right? <laughs> this is fine. You're good." How's your cousin Eric? Yeah, you, you doing okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. Uh, well, it's it's mm -hmm. it's true. It's so especially I feel like from our uh, our like parents' generation standpoint it's such a taboo like topic right and like I actually had to sit down with my parents recently because I'm like doing this new thing where I'm like boundaries Ellie, Ooh, boundaries, Ellie. <laughs> has, but um that must be working decently it's usually pretty good <laughs> decent um <laughs> but yeah uh, just working on boundaries I don't even remember what the question is but the question <laughs> <laughs> I have ADHD too, so I don't remember what the question It's the worst. <laughs> worst. <laughs> at least we said. At least Sometimes we said it's fun. Sometimes it's fun. <laughs> now, right now it's fun. Right now it's fun because it, you're in the right area. But when I do this at work, it's it's not as fun, especially because I'm a project manager and people are like, "Tell me the thing, next thing to do," and I'm like, "Yep." <laughs> I'm gonna check my notes right here. <clears throat> uh, no, but my question was like going through and and dealing with trauma and like getting past it. And so you started talking about how generationally, uh, oh, yeah. like it wasn't. It's not. It's a very hard thing to discuss to someone and be like, "Hey, you traumatized me." And yeah. it, it, depending on the generation, they, for them to be like, "No, I didn't." 
Yeah. Oh yeah, that's so true. Yeah. And also that's a difficult thing too that I think a lot of people deal with. And I think is actually the reason why I ended up making um, my Discord community is because I wanted people to feel like they had a safe place to go to. I mean, when a few years back when I was not in a good place, my just having a room to myself was kind of my sanctuary. But I know that there's other people out there that probably don't even have that. So like just being able to escape online and just talk to people who are also going to be nice to you and respect you uh, is like huge, <laughs> huge, huge if true. <laughs> Do you, uh, do you, so, I mean, like, you feel like you've found that now, right? Do you feel like your mental health is in a kind of a better, better place? Definitely. I mean, I think that we should normalize regression and therapy because yes. it's such a natural part of the process. Right. And like this whole week I've regressed, but I've also learned from that process. I have learned so much more about myself. Um, so it's like, not even, you know, my mom has a harder time understanding it. And she's like, Oh, right. Ali, I can't believe you wasted three years. But I mean, it's, there's really like no such thing as wasted time when it comes to like self healing and self growth. Mm -hmm. And if anything, like that period of time, I learned so much about myself and what I need to do to make myself as happy as I can be like naturally, you know? Yeah. So without, I mean, like, you don't have to go into details. Like, what was your trauma? Describe it please, in five <laughs> words. Where did, what happened on this doll? Uh, without like going into detail about it, what do you find? Uh, I kind of want to like dive into like, what did you find last week that was so, that brought it back up? Because for me, it was uh, like the character uh, like, I can't diagnose somebody who I don't know, right? Like, I can't Absolutely. diagnose somebody, period. So I can't be like, this guy's a narcissist. But he mm -hmm. has narcissistic tendencies. And I'm talking yeah. about our president. And so watching that is very traumatizing for people who have experienced narcissistic abuse. So, like, that was yes. my whole shtick last week. So what was your shtick? Thank you for saying this. I am so glad that it wasn't me. Sorry, no, just kidding. Oh, it's not um, just you. It's by no, far I'm glad you. that I've, I've been a part of this. Seriously, um, I feel exactly the same way and I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, it is so hard to understand narcissistic abuse if you have not yeah. personally experienced it yourself. Um, and honestly, like I, my understanding of that and, and so much more it's changed my perspective on a lot of other things in my sure. life too. And sure. I'm even more grateful for that. And I think if anything, I don't know if it's affected my empathy, but um, I am super empathic. And so I like, I definitely like feed off of like people's emotions in the room or like people I'm talking to. And, you know, when I, when I go home, it's just Fox news all the time. And the vibe oh. is just like, kind of constant <laughs> yelling oh. um and I don't know it's very triggering for me sure. uh, like on top of everything else but um yeah it's really hard to under like for me to explain it to my parents I, I just it's constant gentle gentle pressure over and over and just like trying to slowly like explain things because um especially with mental health stuff I think you know, my, my dad survived the London bombing because he's Whoa. like actually like 83 now. Whoa. Yeah. And um, my mom's, I think, 70. My mom's rocking. You rule, mom. Um, but uh, yeah, both of them, I feel like that whole generation was kind of taught to like, e even in like families was taught to just keep your emotions to yourself. Sure. Um we don't really talk about that in the family. And if anything, in like German societies, it's seen as like a, a sign of weakness. Sure, sure. Um, so I feel like that's also been a big theme in my life is um, just how German my mom is. Uh, but yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, so I, I want to go back to this notion of like, we kind of, I, when the trauma is around you and when it's, when it's, when it's triggered around you and there's nothing you can do 
but react to it like do you have any coping mechanisms that you were implying last like that you were employing last week or were you just kind of because I was just kind of riding through and just being like let's see <laughs> let's see what happens because you can't you know this week <laughs> yeah 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 let's just we'll ride this wave I guess because I have no control over anything yeah oh man yeah no I no this week was a lot um yeah especially being a really empathic person and like feeding I have so many friends that this election turnout affected this True. election's turnout turned like affected me um like just so many people in my life and mm -hmm. uh to just have to worry about that I don't know that yeah, plus, yeah I think everything all at once kind of just hit me <laughs> and it probably actually sparked some PTSD as a result but um yeah it's been it's been actually really cool to work through, like through all of this stuff okay and despite like things being really tough uh it really makes those good days so much better Aww. like genuinely yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah and yeah <laughs> so what it's it's so tough to talk about this stuff in the context mm -hmm. of like um I don't know what would you what would you tell somebody if they're kind of going through a similar thing like what would you tell them to do if they were asking you like hey I'm feeling like PTSD and all this stuff is stressing me out yeah I would say I mean check your boundaries with people like if you have someone in your life that's like an extremely toxic person try to keep them at a distance if you can if they're family obviously um just try to spend as much time away as possible if if you can try to make boundaries with them if they're unreasonable I can understand <laughs> what that might be like but um yeah I think again constant gentle pressure and like same thing with this election I think patience love and understanding is what's honestly going to bring us all together here um because this whole this whole nation has been fractured for so long and I feel like Trump saw um an opportunity he saw a crack uh in this country and was like eh well you know hey <laughs> I don't know. Was that a was that was that a Morty impression? I don't know, Rick. I don't know. <laughs> I heard but, it. Um... I heard it. I got a little Morty out of it for sure, for sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, he totally. He saw. I mean, and that's that is kind of what narcissists do. Um, again, we are not doctors, but right, uh, right. I like to think I know a few things. <laughs> I know some things. <laughs> I know stuff. <laughs> I know a thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's really hard, and it's it's hard to it's like also with narcissistic abuse is like gaslighting right so to feel like to have a president who you constantly feel like is lying to you because he is right um and that's what gaslighting is right and everyone around him doesn't see all the people who don't see it it's like i don't know it just sorry no <laughs> don't just be feel no if it, it makes people like us who have been abused feel like we're being gaslighted too Again. by everyone else yes and and that's not anyone else's fault necessarily right. that's just like trauma being like yo watch out right right, <laughs> like, right. survival mode just like kicks in like, that is i think that's honestly hands down the hardest thing for me mm -hmm. growing up with narcissistic abuse was that people would talk to like uh so in my case it was my parents and um yeah people would talk to my parents and they'd be like there's wonderful people and then Same. at home <laughs> yeah and then at home things would be a nightmare and so it's very very similar to that where you, you know you you everybody's like no he's totally fine not everybody but you realize that half of the country is like no he's totally fine everything mm -hmm. is happening is normal and then you go home and you kind of feel the consequences and you're like no this can't be normal and that's yeah I mean that's the whole thing of like gaslighting but I will say this because I didn't say it earlier um if you are in a situation where like a family member or you're like you feel stuck right now y'all should know as soon as you get out you have a new lease on life oh my like, god straight yes. up like girl like walk it out like <laughs> 
<laughs> like you will never, you will never like experience life the same again. You will feel this like sense of independence and, uh, and it gets better. You just got to stick it out until, I don't know. For me, it was until I was what, 18? Same. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> college kind of, well, I went to college as a, as a way to like get out. That was my, that was my out. Same, definitely. And then when I when I got back uh, after college, I was like, <laughs> "All right, guys, I'm out. <laughs> Sorry, Bye, I can't do this. Bye." Yeah, um, but it's it's really interesting. Like you said, you you also learn a lot, right, from the experience, and you're able to walk away and be like, "Oh, things are like I understand these things about people that other people." Yeah, don't get. It's like almost like a superpower now too. <laughs> It's, it's just like superpower. I don't want it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like anytime you get triggered, that's like the kryptonite. It's like, no. <laughs> I was doing so good. I like, I had, this. <laughs> I, I had this. I swear I had this. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. That's so, that's so true. Um, by the way, if y'all have any questions, throw them out in chat. I will do my best to keep track of them. I would love, you know, we'd love to like answer them and go through them. But um, so what have you specifically done to get like through trauma? So therapy, um, what, what, like leaving the house, that's a big <clears throat> one. Uh, yeah, I, there's something that I actually did for, well, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> take your time. Take your time. <laughs> um, there there was one coping mechanism that I had that I didn't realize was a coping mechanism until like after the fact. Um, not every time that I've cut me my hair, but um like a lot of the times that I've cut it really, really short, uh, I decided to do that because I was actually trying to like shrink myself or minimize myself to oh. not like draw attention or like but to that, I say nay. <laughs> Absolutely never do that. <laughs> um, if I could talk to little Allie, I would say, don't, don't, don't shrink yourself. Don't, yeah, don't, don't do that, man. <laughs> You're so much better than that. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, but it is, it yeah. is, it's like you said, it's a coping mechanism. Definitely. Oh, absolutely. Um, honestly, my biggest coping mechanism is my cat. Like I wish Aww. here, I have to, I have to move this camera so you guys can see her right now. Do you see? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Everybody wanted to see the cat. There's the cat fam. There's the yeah. cat. <laughs> um, yeah, something kind of clicked with me. And, and honestly, I don't even think this is kind of sad to say it's, it's sad and it's happy and I'm very grateful and I'm so lucky to have this cat in my life because when I got her like I rescued her <laughs> um but she's been with me for like everything and just has such a great character and such a good personality and um also the discord too I think yeah. that was another really good I didn't realize I was in that moment actually building it for myself Aww. um which is kind of ironic but um yeah, y'all, uh, I, I, I took it for a test drive. It works, man, like guaranteed. Um, <laughs> yeah, just just being able to cultivate a really kind and um, accepting community. Uh, when, did, when did you figure out that like something was not right? Because part of, part of the way of oh, getting yeah. out of abuse is being like, hey, hey don't do that yeah so yeah like, when when did you figure it was it just like turning 18 or like what at what moment yeah Ooh, um which time i know um yeah when i was younger there were definitely parts of it i think it's really hard too because for such a long time i felt like my medication or my mental illness was um kind of something that was thrown in my face um more or less like oh you're you're acting like a baby you should like take your medication yeah that's like that awful. sort of mentality that's terrible <laughs> yeah um but honestly what i've found like I, i'm kind of trailing off again here what i found Trail as an adult all the ways you want to go go okay go ahead. cool um what i actually found as an adult is 
like my ADHD and my depression are like my superpowers. Like if anything, they make me understand people so much more and they make me like a better person. Like they make me treat others with more respect because like, I know it's tough, you know? So I don't know. It's good. <laughs> oh, well, I, I love when people find, you know, peace with their illnesses because I, there's a lot of like stages of confronting the fact that you have uh, a mental health issue that like can't just won't just go away after yeah. a while um and and coming to the point of like hey you know what it's a freaking superpower it's not a superpower I would have picked for myself but, <laughs> but- no I mean I mean especially like anxiety don't even get me started and I'm, I'm sure you know <laughs> um but yeah it's it's tough I um the guy from SNL, I can't remember his name now. He he made the show Barry. Um, oh my gosh! Yeah, he talks about anxiety a lot. Oh gosh, it's gonna yeah. kill me. Who is it? Who is it? Um, <laughs> uh, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, me too. We're freaking. It's, I'm googling. I it. bet Chat already knows. Yeah, they'll Chat. Probably, they'll chat, probably figure chat it out. Can already <laughs> tell who but was he it. He had he had like written something about having anxiety and how he would. Bill Hader. Go on, Okay. Bill Hader. We're yes. We're good. Uh, how he would go on SNL every night, just like, and he would get really bad anxiety. And like, honestly, just hearing that made me yeah. feel so much better. And it, it also made me realize like, if anything in the last three years or like, I mean, it's been weird since Trump got elected for, for people <laughs> right. like us. Yeah. Um, but I, I've just learned so much about mental health and wellness. Like it's been, I feel like a lot of people have grown in this time and maybe y'all are not giving each other enough credit. <laughs> but it's, um, it's, it's true. We, I can't, you're kind of, you're forced to learn coping mechanisms that you, I mean, I don't want to, but I do know of them now because I had to, you had to get through it. Like there's no, yeah there's no other option you just get through surviving yeah yeah and then that's difficult too because it's hard it's hard once you are in a cycle of abuse to like realize that you're even in a cycle of abuse and then ugh, it's like this whole thing (laughs) well that's what i I invited you to talk about so the whole thing (laughs) is what we're here for well i mean essentially what it boils down to is like we are obviously a product of our mothers and our fathers. So it's like, we're, I mean, ultimately that's what we grow up. So that's what we're surrounded by. So that's what we're used to. That's what like we're familiar with. So anytime that someone treats us like our parents would, let's say, um, you know, they're, you're like, oh, this is, this seems normal to me. But like for someone who has a parent who, um, you know, maybe was, didn't understand, um, or wasn't really, um, you know, <laughs> putting in the effort at the time. Sure. Um, it's tough. It's really, really tough. It's tough with family too, man. I yeah, I think that's the <laughs> hardest. Cause, well, there's an there's an implication when it comes to family that like you have to like put up with yeah. it. Yeah. Like have to just you have to, and and that's yeah. and we talk about that this a lot like in the stream in general. Like your family can be whoever the hell you want it to be. It doesn't have to be blood Absolutely. related. Absolutely. Because and I think yeah. Oh, go sorry. Ahead. No, 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 no. Go, go, go. No, and and for me, honestly, being um, being a part of that and finding the gaming community. And it's, it's great to actually be able to talk about it now and fully understand it. Cause like, I've always said, Hey, gaming communities are awesome, but it's like just being able to com- connect with like other like-minded people like me. Um, and like just the early days of the net, man, like everyone on there was so weird. Um, I don't know. It was a good time, man. <laughs> I feel like that's why nostalgia is like, everyone's like, hell yeah, bro. Vaporwave. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah. <laughs> um all right we have a few questions so let's let's Yay. dive into them <laughs> classic steve beep asks hey ali thoughts on cancel culture seen quite a few people get dragged through the mud over at that and it's the worst yeah i actually totally agree the worst <laughs> um 
Parks and Rec. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Hell yeah, so good. Uh, John Ralphio, the best. So good. <laughs> so I've become like more. So and more... Jersey. You, I mean, you understand, right? Yeah. You understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm serious. I've become like so obsessed with uh, just the actor. I forget the actor's name now. Who? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's fantastic. I His like... uh, Twitter is rejected jokes, which I think yes. is hilarious. Yes, and he. Um, I like loved the Sonic movie because of him. Like he's the reason that <laughs> I, I need watched to see Sonic. that still. So I hey, I guess it. I know what I'm doing after this. There you go. I recommend <laughs> it's perfect, like <laughs> stupid watching, you know, where you could just be like Oh, and, that's and awesome. It's on the TV. It's perfect. It's perfect for that. And then Jim Carrey is amazing in it. But okay, so oh, I all love that. him. Don't even get me started. Um yeah, but so cancel culture that. though. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm still yeah. here. I'm still here. Um, <laughs> we got this. We got this. We're back on track. <laughs> We got this fam. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't really believe in cancel culture. I think if you look at any human being ever in the hu- in the history of human beings, um, we all have flaws and we all make mistakes. And it's not really necessarily the fact that we make the mistakes. It's more so if we can walk away and learn from those mistakes. Right. And I think that kind of dictates like whether you're a good person or not, like, in my opinion um but yeah that's it's crazy <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> cancel culture is one of those things where uh, it was used to help disenfranchised people uh mm-hmm. you know like stand up to their oppressors and is now used for people to complain about tweets from 10 years ago and <laughs> yeah yeah i just feel like everyone has like a rap sheet everyone everyone's done something once in their life that they've probably regretted and it's like all right guys like let's all chill like especially there's i think a period of time where like trolls were like digging in people's tweets from like yeah like you yeah. said like 10 yeah. years ago and it's like yeah, but is he what he seems like a totally effort, right? What? A totally like, different person now. Yeah, yeah, like how how can you compare? I mean, <sighs> <laughs> like my twenties, I just did dumb stuff. We all do dumb stuff in our twenties. Like, I don't know who who's gonna say that they weren't like that too. And to like damn people or like throw people under the bus, like quite literally on on the Twitter box or on whatever have you. I don't care. Um, I don't like that whole influencer culture of like stabbing friends in the back. When did that become? That's a thing. That's yeah. a, that's a thing where like <laughs> somebody not be a thing. Yeah, where somebody makes <laughs> a make mistake. That not a thing. <laughs> right, right, right. Where like somebody makes a mistake and then suddenly everybody was this whole time didn't like them because they're all trying to like, like yeah. yeah yeah trying to get ahead of like yes, well I didn't like, like them first when it was cool. She's so. a witch. Yeah. Her. Like, it is. No, it's similar to that. <laughs> It's similar Is she a duck? Does it matter? <laughs> I mean, I I do again, like I do get its purpose, and I do understand oh, when it's yeah, used absolutely. appropriately. Like the whole Me Too movement is a great example of yes. it being. It, that's that's the whole point. But be, making basically, <laughs> I think I don't know that I would call it cancel culture as much as I would just like vilifying people's mistakes. Like it's very. Mm expensive to make a mistake yes. on the yes and i think that especially these companies like disney or these major like motion picture houses when they approach these situations they just need to keep in mind like there's two sides to every story like and people are terrible to each other often people are terrible to each other because they hate each other so much and they just want to get away from each other and it's like to, to damn someone because of that. And I think we should absolutely hold people accountable and stand with survivors and absolutely believe women. Um, but yeah, to, to continue to damn people is only furthering this notion that if, if, you know, men are held accountable, they're going to, you know, lose two years of their career or, uh, the horrible judgment will be expelled down on them from the gods of sexual assault. Like, it's just try and be a good person if you can. If you make a mistake, you know, try and fix it. Um, I've, the Dalai Lama has the 18 or 17 or 18 rules of living. And one of my favorite is um, when you lose, don't lose the lesson. 
Um, and that's kind of been something that's just been repeating in my brain over and over again, because again, wasted time, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, it's okay. And that's kind of like, it's weird. I have this whole <laughs> thing on life that after I got out of the abusive situation, the first time, um, I call it life XP. <laughs> um, but it's, it's like my, uh, it's what I use to describe, um, when you go through something in life or, or you like have a quest, let's say, or like you go on some journey to do something, let's say if it's a fetch quest, I don't know. Um, even if you mess it up and you fail, you still learn, you still get life XP along the way. And that's the biggest differentiator between real life and video games is when you lose in real life, you actually walk away a better person. And if anything, I think that is a reason why video games are so awesome. Is it because it constantly teaches us that if we fall, we can get back up, which is sick. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh Oh my gosh! I, I okay. I love that. Okay, hold on, hold on. We gotta, we gotta make Yay! sure we clip that and tweet that and whatever the hell else. Um, but hashtag life XP. Um. Uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, it was just it was really hard, especially in this last relationship that I was in. Um, and I don't, I don't have any ill will towards anyone. Um, I'm actually a very passive person and a very understanding person. Cause if anything, I've been in so many situations where I, I understand all angles of it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think, I think that period of time, um, I think it was really good for me. <laughs> uh, I don't, I really don't know where I was going with that actually. I got really distracted by this cat that's right here. <laughs> oh, back at the kitty cat. <laughs> Such I'm sorry, what was the too. question again? I don't remember. <laughs> You're totally fine. We're fine. Uh, I'll go to the, the there's a, there's another question, so I'll ask that one. But um, mm. uh, I just remembered. I'm go sorry. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, especially the last like, I'll say two years because the first year I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but like just being kind of in a situation where I felt stuck and I didn't know what to do. I think knowing like that I had this like stupid thing life XP that I like kept repeating to myself and shout out to um Jane McGonigal by the way you guys should check out super better um because it's awesome and that kind of also reading about her studies on video games made me completely rethink mental health so awesome. please do that it's fantastic um <laughs> but yeah I don't know <laughs> I was going uh, somewhere. <laughs> you were, no, 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 no. That, that that's great. It's a it's a study. It, I'm following. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm on the ADHD <laughs> train too. So maybe maybe okay, I'm cool. yeah. Uh, super yeah. Super better is pretty cool. Yeah, all right, all right. I'll be checking it out too. Then yeah, I used Yay. that a few years ago. But you so you basically had a little mantra for yourself, right? The life XP. Yeah, thing. and just being like, okay, like I don't know. For me, a turning point um, was my cat. Yeah, definitely my cat. And and realizing, because one of the things that's very difficult, especially for people who have depression, mm -hmm. is to be able to walk away or to like really stand up to like for yourself. Um, like if you're not giving yourself like a fair shot by like exercising every day, like just going for a walk a little bit, um, like food is medicine. Um, meditating if you can pet cats <laughs> um like routine is really good um but my cat was like bar none just the one thing that like kept my head in the game is like I'm a cat mom and I know that sounds so silly it's not like, <laughs> but um I mean I have all these friends that have like kids and stuff and I'm like I really feel like my cat's my daughter, you know, but I know you're it's not, not the same thing. <laughs> no, it's not the same thing. But like, according to research, you are by far not alone. There's there's a lot of people Yay. in like our generation who who act, who never had children who act like they're yeah. animals or their kids. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Especially, I think, millennials. Yeah, I know so many millennials and even uh, Gen Y or Gen Zers. Uh, I'm not sure which one it is, but um, that have just got like pets during quarantine and everyone's yep. like yeah this is 
This is awesome. Yeah, it's pets. <laughs> it, listen, it's pets or uh, plants. There's no like in the middle. It's pets or plants. Yeah, yeah. big bonus if there's also plants. <laughs> Uh, cats do calm you down, Clapsal. I agree with that. I agree. Hi, so Tony true. First Pilot. Um, okay, so Keep the up. next question <laughs> is, is uh, Bliffle Split asks, were there things your abusers tried to destroy for you that you managed to claim back? Woo! Oh my God, yes. Um, yeah, my my dignity. Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, I had an abuser try to, like, straight up uproot and like kind of destroy me um the gaming industry is really small y'all and people don't keep this in mind like it, the world is a small place um but yeah someone tried to i don't know i feel like basically sabotage my career it was like kind of a real smear of my character um and not at all true but unfortunately in these cases, especially with narcissistic abuse, these people are so charming and so charismatic. And these these things sound so horrible that you could never, I mean, you could never believe that the narcissist would make up all of these terrible sure, things. Sure. You know what I mean? It, it, or that someone could be that manipulative. But um, what would happen? Um, but yeah, I being able... Yeah, I, I, I definitely, it would be really cool to go back to LA um, a second time and not even necessarily for a job or anything, but I feel like I kind of left. I left because I wanted to go um, to work for Microsoft, yes, but also I kind of felt like I was bullied out um, of of town almost, like, um, but I don't know. I've grown from that so much now. And if anything, I don't have any ill will towards anyone. I've learned so much. Um, and I have a better, like, I have a better head on my shoulders because of it. And I want to help other people see, like, you know, there's, there's no shame in admitting that you're wrong or like, I mean, good people won't like really villainize you or anything like that. Mm. Um, but just, let people speak their truths. Um, it's really important. Uh, I think, yeah, making sure that people are accounting accountable, I think is really, really important. Um, but yeah. Do you feel like you've been able to kind of earn that back and take back what, like, you know, all the uh, things yeah. you lost? Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like, honestly, even just with this G4 thing, um, being able to like stand up for myself. And one thing that's been a thing for me and a constant theme is I've never had like an agent or anything. I've been doing this for over 10 years and wow. I've only always represented myself. And for someone who has depression, it's really, really hard to like, and, and anyone really, honestly, um, it's hard to it, of the oceans. <laughs> no, no, it's true, but it's, it's hard to vouch for yourself, not have, it's easier to have yes. somebody else hopefully do it for you but that's absolutely not easy. so like just to be able to do all that stuff to like I don't know on my own I don't, that was really vindicating for me and also my dream job didn't exist like a year ago so that's really cool too <laughs> um because when I left I yeah it was weird <laughs> I thought I was going back you know it was like I'll see you guys next year, you know, and then, and then, and then, <laughs> and then the network went under. <laughs> right. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Just being able to stand up for myself was a really vindicating thing for me and like, just be my own agent. Um, and I think that I have been able to break the cycle and being able to stick up for myself and make those boundaries with people, not only, um, online, but in my personal life and at home. Um, so important. So important. And this cat, the most important. <laughs> the most important. <laughs> right anytime, nice. anytime attention's not on them, they like find a way to be back at attention. That's adorable. I know. She's the best. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. Um, but okay. All right. All right. Um, how all do right, you... all right, all, all right, right, all right. Yeah, we're, going, we're getting there, we're getting there. In it. 
how do you cope with the guilt of letting go, I guess, of, of your past, of past things? Mm -hmm. Oof. Um, I mean, <sighs> guilt, like shame, jealousy, like all of these emotions are like totally normal feelings, y'all. So like, if you're having these feelings, don't feel like a bad person because you're not. Like, it, you know, like all of that is fine. It's again, it's more once you cross over the threshold of like acting on those things or I don't know, that's when it becomes <laughs> murky territory. Um, gosh, what was the question again? I'm letting go <laughs> specifically, more yeah. specifically, like how do you release the guilt of letting go? I think for forgiveness is really important. Um, not only being able to forgive yourself for letting it happen and realizing that it's not your fault. Um, and that, I mean, this statistic in and of itself says so much about um, domestic abuse and abusive relationships, but it takes the average person seven times before they can actually leave an abusive wow. relationship or whatever. Um, I wonder if that actually works for family situations too, because that seems pretty accurate. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, yeah, it's tough. It's just tough. <laughs> yeah, I like the whole self-forgiveness course. I like that a lot. The taking, uh, and that's something that I've been learning also to mm -hmm. do, just taking the time for you to to be to forgive yourself like you, we take a yeah. lot of time I think we take a lot of time to forgive others and we make sure that others feel yeah like feel safe and okay and everything but we don't take time to step back and be like well what do know, I need yeah what exactly yeah. exactly what are my needs yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely that's so true um yeah it's it's crazy it's tough <laughs> I think I yeah, just in the last few years, I've learned more about myself. And again, a really good starting point, I think, for mental health is the Dalai Lama's 18 Rules of Living. Um, one of them is actually spend time alone every day. Um, there was a time when I was in that place and it was so bad that I couldn't sit with myself alone with my thoughts for five minutes. So I would just keep music playing all the time or I would like play games or I would just constantly, you know, you're constantly kind of distracting. Right, right, right. Um, but over time, I've slowly like shifted my focus back towards that mantra. And I feel like it's really, really helped me a lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is an interesting question because I feel like it's left field, but we'll answer it anyway. Sure. <laughs> uh, what do you do with a viewer who subscribed to you and donates bits and starts to feel unwelcome in your stream and that's affecting their mental health? Would you do anything to try to help them? Um, yes. Um, I, I think it just depends on the situation. Um, if that person has come to me specifically already, um, that would be a different situation. Yeah. But um, yeah, if it's if it's any situation with anyone, I would hope that you would go straight to the mods. Right. Um, if the mods, the mods are the first line of defense. Because um, I mean, again, this is one of those things. And I would say this to streamers too, set boundaries. It's really, really important because, you know, you can't control other people, but you can control how much you let them into your life. Um, so if you have beef with someone or if, if you are feeling unwelcome or if you feel unsafe, you should absolutely 100% go to that person who is, or if you don't feel <laughs> comfortable going to that person, go to someone who makes you feel safe, but definitely talk about it with someone. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. I mean, that's another thing too. Uh, Dalai Lama's 18 rules of living. When you notice that you've made a mistake, correct it as soon as you can. Like. So just go to whoever you have the problem with, you know, and, and people should be understanding. Um, they, they aren't always, but I think patience and hearing people out, um, it's a tricky thing, uh, especially for someone like me who um, also has been dealing with a lot of PTSD mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. type trauma lately. So um, I think, I think in my situation, it's, interesting because 
especially when you need to like take a step back from people and and work on your own stuff um so yeah I think the theme for tonight is pretty much boundaries yeah um, I like that yeah, yeah. boundaries and self-forgiveness it's it's like Absolutely. how do you grow after trauma you you figure out what your boundaries are and you make sure mm-hmm. that that person doesn't have access to you anymore the way they used to and then you forgive yourself for anything that you could have done that you feel like was um was bad that's a that's a really oh wait we have another question that's really interesting oh, yeah, uh, yeah how do yeah, I no. stop how do I stop hating myself for messing up in a relationship and breaking a heart um uh I can take this one I and oh yeah sure you uh, wait no do you have one go ahead um I, I can add to yours after. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I would say um, just recognizing that there's no, um, whatever you messed up, there's no there's no doubt that like, okay, you messed up, you hurt somebody, you maybe hurt them several times. Uh, so you kind of, you have two options. The main option is you have to make up for it, right? Or you can walk away or you can make up for it somehow. The thing is on the other side, that person doesn't necessarily have to accept um you know, whatever, wh- however you ask for forgiveness, they don't necessarily have to accept that. So it's up to you to find a way to live with whatever that you did and become comfortable with it. And the first step, I think, to that not only is self-forgiveness, but it's a lot of reflection and it's a lot of what am I going to do different next time? Definitely. I totally agree with that. Nailed it. <laughs> oh, that's it. Damn. All right. It's over. We did it. We did it. The whole thing is, is over. Oh my gosh. Uh, but this has been absolutely, Ali, this is, this is amazing. Do you have any like closing remarks and things that you're like, people remember this? Um, honestly, it's just, everybody makes mistakes. And if you're wondering if you made a mistake, then you're not a bad person because good people don't, I mean, bad people don't think about if they're making mistakes. Um, so yeah, it's okay. We're, you know what? 2020, you know, it, it might, it, you know, it might, it might just through. be a good year. <laughs> it might squeak through. It might be, it might finally get there. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. This oh my has been gosh. So fun. This is, this is, this is, this is the best. I absolutely <laughs> adore <laughs> you. <laughs> and I'm so grateful <laughs> for you. Oh my gosh. All right. We're going to be right back fam uh, with some animal crossing or something, but yeah, stick around. Thank you. Thank you, Allie.